fire one. So I know the 3DS is a bit of a hot topic right now and so many people are scrambling uh, to get the last few physical releases before prices start to really skyrocket. When it comes specifically to the North American 3DS, um, I feel like there's a bit more nuance when it comes to collecting those physical games um, compared to maybe some of the other regions. So today I just wanted to do a little video summarizing um, all the different variations when it comes to North American 3DS game collecting. Um, and also sort of maybe chat about what makes certain variations more desirable than others. Um, using some examples and um, trends that I've noticed when it comes to uh, buying 3DS games today. So I'm going to turn this camera around um, and use some examples of some identifying features when it comes to the different presses and variation styles uh, for these game cases. All right, guys, so there are a few different characteristics that I wanted to specifically point out um, when talking about 3DS game cases. So I'm going to go over first press editions um, and how to identify them. But before I start, um, I wanted to give a shout out to a channel that um, helped kind of solidify some of this information when I was doing my research. So um, I believe the channel is Dre Geek Philosophy Podcast. Um, I'll have a link down in the description um, if you want to check his videos out. Uh, but I think he works for a game store or something and um, was pointing out some of the things I'll be covering today. So I'll mention that um, what, if he has example videos as well, um, if you'd like to cross compare um, what I'll be sharing today. But when it comes to identifying first press editions, um, I think the most obvious example of this is what The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds um, and the first press um, holographic cover. Um, which you kind of telling here. <laughs> um, but there are different um, editions that were released um, with different cover art. So I'll have picture examples um, pop up. Um, but the other way to identify whether or not 3DS game that is Nintendo published um, is a first press edition. Is if you look on the back here, um, there are two different things that you need to look at specifically. So let's zoom in. Um, the first one is um, this last digit here above this barcode. If it reads as zero, that means it's a first press edition. Um, if there is a one there, that means it's um, a different press. And the other spot um, that indicates which press it is, um, is this number here right above that box. And it, um, the letter A means it's first press. Um, if you have a B on your copy, that means it's second uh, press, um, C, third press, um, etc. It goes down the alphabet. So with Dre Geek's video, he actually had two different copies to share side by side um, if he wanted to refer to that and see those number of distinctions. And when it comes to my first party Nintendo published games, um, the only second press um, copy I have is this Ocarina of Time. So I do remember actually buying this um, late because uh, I think when they first sold this, um, it initially sold out and the prices skyrocketed, but then it went back in stock and everything kind of calmed down again. So I definitely grabbed this on the second press round. Um, and to verify that, um, I have a one here and then a B um, on those locations. And some other kind of identifying features um, when it comes to the different presses that might not be super obvious at first um, is the ESRB ratings. So. Um, I guess in later presses, and I think they also modified this for later release games, um, they used a more of a bold black border for the ESRB ratings. Um, and a lot of the text also changed throughout the different iterations of printing these games um, that I found interesting. Also the ESRB rating just in the front of the cover too. Um, different colorings when it comes to um, spelling out everyone in this case. But for the standard North American case, I think the only other game that had that holographic first press sheen to it um, was Metroid Samus Returns, um, this game here. So to my knowledge, I believe it's just the Nintendo published game. So they need to have Nintendo on the case somewhere. So usually here or on the litter um, release games um, on the spine there that have this distinguishing feature. Um, for example, I have Dragon Quest VIII here, which was Nintendo published. And so this is a first print run because of the zero here and the A. Um, another example is Fantasy Life, which was tilled by 
level 5, but it's Nintendo published. A zero and an A, um, etc. But when you get to the non Nintendo published games, for example, uh, Shimmy Yami Tensei Devil Survivor here. So this is just published by Atlas, um, a third party. Um, they do not have the same sort of barcode um, thing on the back here. So from what I could tell, I couldn't really find any information about distinguishing the first press releases for these games. And that goes across multiple third party um, publishers. So that includes Atlas here. Um, I do have another Square game, or Square Enix game here. Again, no zero or um, the AB sort of distinguishing factor. I have an X Seed game or Marvelous if you are in Europe, but it's X Seed there on the spine. If it wants to focus. Um, but yeah, again, no zeros or the AB sort of distinguishing features. And if you're curious about the new Nintendo 3DS games, um, I just have one example here. Um, Xenoblade Chronicles 3D, again, Nintendo first party game. And they still have the zero and AB sort of designation there. So yeah, I thought that was interesting about first print runs. Another interesting tidbit um, is if you buy um, box sets, uh, for example, I have Fire Emblem Echo, Shadows of Valentia, um, that came in the big box um, on the back here. Um, they have the zero codes here, but they don't have the AB here because it's a not for resale distinguishing feature there, which I thought was interesting. And similar, I have the uh, Fates Special Edition case here. Um, and here again, they have the zeros, but it's a not for resale. Uh, so those are the only Nintendo published uh, special editions or box sets that I have for the 3DS. Um, I'm not sure what the Metroid Samus Returns box is like or some of the other boxes, um, but I do have launch editions and collector's editions uh, from other publishers. So let me share those quickly. So I have Radiant Historia here that came in the launch edition. Um, and they have the code here on the back. It's, it's just like what I was sharing before. Um, and no distinction of what press it is based off of those numbers. I'm just that it's in the launch edition box. And the game case inside um, doesn't have the not for resale markings like the Nintendo published games had, which I thought was interesting. Um, I could pull out some more examples. For example, I have Seventh Dragon, code VDF here, the launch edition, and Sega was just like Atlas at this stage. Um, I also have two of these boxes here by different third-party publishers that need to be opened. Um, I'm gonna play these games, so I don't mind opening them. Okay, the other side. Um, but this is sealed with a Y fold. And on the back, again, no indication that it came in in a box. Um, this just looks like the standard edition they stuck um, with the OST here. So I have a feeling these other boxes will be similar. So let's test this one out. This one's much easier to open. back is, it looks just like the standard edition. And I've unboxed this on my channel already, but just for comparison's sake, um, the last 3DS game essentially, Fragrant Story. And the back of this 3D case is very empty. Um, but yeah, there's no, again, distinguishing feature about what press it is. So the next topic I wanted to go over is uh, seals. This is what the typical Y-fold looks like. Um, 
that was pretty standard um, for most 3DS releases. Um, and so any Nintendo published game that you receive, if it's brand new, it should have this Y-fold. And most of the third party publishers were also doing this Y-fold. However, um, looking a little bit further into this, um, it seems like a lot of the third party games started to not use the Y-fold uh, machines. And instead we're just doing the regular shrink wrap seals. So I'm gonna bring an example of one of my recent pickups, um, which is Stories of Seasons here. And um, as you notice, it has a not so pretty, uh, just regular shrink wrap covering. So um, I've actually received games like this before, I would say for the past year or so. Um, one of the games that I received in the shrink wrap was Shimigami Tensei Devil Survivor. And when that happened, um, I thought I got um, a resealed game and it wasn't legit from the publisher. And this game also didn't come with a manual, which I noticed a lot of open copies had. So I was a little upset that happened, um, especially when this game started getting more expensive and the price I paid. <laughs> However, um, nowadays it seems like um, at least eBay sellers are better at uh, acknowledging that the game that they're sending you is not gonna have a Y fold. Instead, it has the regular shrink wrap. And for some reason, Atlas especially just had really ugly shrink wrapping. Um, so this is actually a pretty decent copy, I would say, for the shrink wrap. Um, I think when I received this, it just looked really, really bad. Dre Geek's channel actually shows a box sent directly from a publisher that he opened on camera show that they were all shrink wrapped. So his video and some other things that I've looked into um, just kind of helped solidify that these third party publishers are doing the shrink wrap wrapping and not the white fold and they're still legit new games. But yeah, that was eye opening for me personally. So I just wanted to kind of spread awareness that if you get a game, um, like this story of seasons here. It's just probably the cheap stealing method that um, these third party publishers were doing um, as their last print runs. All right, so I think I mentioned a number of things in this video already, um, but the last thing I wanted to cover um, are the different regional differences within the standard North American release games. So I have this copy of Berkeley Second, which was Nintendo published. Um, and then I also have the first game here, Bravely Default, which is, as you see here, a world edition, or it's also referred to as UAE, um, which was um, the game type distributed to Saudi Arabia, Malaysia, Singapore, and make sure to say down here that it's an official product. And so a lot of 3DS collectors try to avoid the world editions here, um, mostly because they consider them um, lesser value. So if you're into 3DS game collecting, that is one thing to consider. For me personally, um, I just don't like having this here for general aesthetic reasons. Um, I think it's a little bit ugly, which maybe that's a bit superficial, but um, I think as a collector, you're allowed to be um, particular in what things you wanna pick up, whether it be for value reasons or just you like the look of something a bit better. I think that's perfectly valid. Similar to why maybe you would rather have a first press Link Between Worlds game than a second press because the holographic cover is cooler and you don't want something else on the cover uh, distorting um, the image. Um, so I guess that's my two cents on that, but um, it doesn't just stop here. Um, you'll also notice that the World Editions also have um, a color corner there. And you'll also notice that um, the information up here is different as well. Um, there's like a QR code there and how they differentiate the um, serial number it looks like for the MDE edition is there. Um, I don't know if they have multiple presses of these. Uh, that's also something I've looked into yet. So um, they might stick with the 0, 1, 2, et cetera, um, distinguishing the different presses. But something else to keep in mind and how this is different than the standard North American edition um, the other North American edition that you'll be seeing for a lot of these games, especially the Nintendo first party games, or rather, I think I've only actually seen this in Nintendo published games. Um, they do have special French Canadian versions. Um, I'll have a picture come up because I don't own one of these, but just in the corner here, it will have FR, which means that there's a French language option um, if you bought that version. 
When it comes to pricing, I've already mentioned how World Editions are considered lesser value compared to your standard edition. I don't really know where the French edition falls into that. I feel like it's somewhere in the middle. It's more desirable than a World Edition, but maybe if you live in the US, it's less desirable than the standard edition. However, I don't know if you live in Canada, if the French Canadian versions are more desirable, but that might just be up to personal choice and language preferences. And I don't know how widely available the French Canadian versions were. From my understanding, they're mostly distributed in the Quebec area and maybe not necessarily the other provinces, but I honestly am not sure. So if you're from Canada and you'd like to enlighten me, um, please let me know down below. So yeah, those are some things to keep in mind, though I think from a rarity standpoint, the French Canadian versions, I feel like probably had fewer releases than the standard North American copy. But Again, maybe that doesn't really play on the value so much in this case, but I just wanted to throw that out there. All right, so that about covers everything that I've noticed on the 3DS game cases here in North America. Um, if I missed anything, please let me know down in the comments below. And also, if you know how to identify some of the features on the game cart, um, I would be very interested in knowing that as well. Um, but to wrap up this video, I hope you guys enjoyed and I was able to give you some insight uh, to some of the nuances when it comes to 3DS game collecting. Um, and I can also make a similar video on Switch games um, if you guys are interested in that. Um, I have a few more videos in the works that um, I'm still trying to tinker out. So look forward to that. And until then, bye guys.